Now, I want to give you a bit of an idea of the actual process that I go through in editing a video. Um, Jeremy made the comment earlier, and I've heard a few people say it, avoid post-production work on your videos at all costs. And I absolutely agree with it, um, 100%. But. G'day everyone, in this video I'm going to show you a brief overview of some of the ways that you can use Camtasia to help you create flip, flipped content. Now Camtasia is an absolutely fantastic tool, it's incredibly powerful, it's user friendly, it's versatile. It does however come with a price tag, it is $350. Uh, Australian dollars at the moment. It's currently May 2016, but in my personal opinion, it is absolutely worth every cent. So what I've got here on the screen in front of me is a uh, recording of a flipped lesson. Uh, it's a mathematics lesson. We're looking at fractions with year five and six students. Um, and the timeline down the bottom here is all of the editing, the post-production that I've done. Now, typically in flipped content, you want to avoid post-production just to avoid having to do the extra work. It's a time thing. However, sometimes you do, you will want to go through and add different, different post-production tools. Now with Camtasia, let's have a very quick look at what we've got. We can add any kind of, um, film clip. We can add images, um, photos, etc. Um, the library is a range of different um, introductions and movies, uh, introductions and title screens that you can have. Callouts, we've got a huge range of different callouts available here. Um, this blue box is one type of callout. What it is, it is something that pops over the top of whatever's on the screen, which can be really useful for a whole range of reasons, particularly this one down here, which is a pixelation tool, um, which is great if you have students in the... Uh, in the clip, but you don't want their faces to be shown for privacy reasons. We can you can zoom and pan on different parts of the screen if you need to. There's audio controls, inbuilt quizzing, which is absolutely fantastic because it means that you don't need to go to another tool after you've made the video to add the interactivity to your flipped content. Um, I love that. Uh, we've also got additional tools. We've got some options, cursor effects, visual properties. So Camtasia also has chroma key functions, which is what you might call the green screen functions. Uh, so I'll show you what that might look like. So when you select a piece of media, which I've done down here by clicking on a clip, um, I can remove a color. All I need to do is choose which color I want to move. Let's just say I'm going to take white out. I click that. Done. I can then control how well that takes it out. I can undo it and I can take out another color. Fantastic if you're using green screen in your flipped content videos. Uh, we've also got uh, voice narration uh, and we can do captions. So sometimes you want to add in a an extra piece of information here. I like to add this in just to remind the students um, and underline here up the top here to let the students know what they need to be doing, um, what they're actually looking out for. You can add call out. So if I want to call attention to a particular piece of the screen, I can do that. And that's really, really easy to control. It's just a simple drop and drag. Uh, I will add another call out in there just to show you what it looks like. It gives me whatever the last one I've used is. It dumps it into the middle of the screen by default. I can move it around. I can turn it. I can change the size. Really, really simple to use. Um, and I can have multiple on screen at any one time. If I want to change how long they're on screen for, it again is very simple. It's just click and drag. Um, in terms of fine tuning your cutting out or splicing or adding in of images, zooming into the timeline is really easy. This bar here gives you great zoom out capacity, but also great zoom in capacity. You can see I've zoomed a long way in there. Um, gives me almost you know, the the tenth of the second each each movement, really, really useful. The interactive quizzes are a fantastic tool, really easy to use as well. What I need to do, I can put the time head where I want it, come over to quizzing, it gives me this box, add a quiz, give the quiz a name, so I might want to call it, um, what is a fraction? So this is checking to see if the students have been paying attention. I can change the question text so the type the quiz name is a reminder for you that appears here in the timeline bar when you're editing it doesn't appear for the students so the question might be what is a fraction for the students and I can select an answer type um, multiple choice fill in the blank short answer true false 
real flexibility, what it does when you are, uh, but what the quizzing function gives you, or what it looks like, is something like this. So these dots are where there are questions. So you can see that, moving along, let's jump here. Now what it does is it gets to this point, it's zoomed in, there's a question there, stop. And the kids have an opportunity there to, if they've not been paying attention, they've not at all, they can replay that last section because they realise, oh, I missed that, I actually have no idea what, what's coming up. Because they don't see the question until they click the the quiz now. Now, in the quizzing section, you've got open answer, short answer, multiple choice, or fill in the blank, you've got real flexibility there, and you can have multiple questions at any one point. Test. Now, the other thing is, if they want to check their answers or continue, when you keep publishing annotations, if you're doing quizzes, it gives you the option to put in an email address. So if you're doing a video for your students on fractions, you push it out to your class, you put your email address in there. When the students have finished watching the video, they've done the quizzes, it will send you an email once a day with any answers that have been submitted for that video. So it gives you an opportunity then to check their understanding, check any misconceptions or problems before they get to class, presuming that they watch the video at home. Um, so that's the quizzing function, a bit of an overview of the quizzing function, and that's what the form looks like when you publish a video in Camtasia that has a quiz. Um, huge fan of the program. Again, it's really easy to use. That's a really quick go over of the program. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more, I'd head to camtasia.com. You can see the name up here in the corner, um, or send me a tweet, or just Google Camtasia. There's heaps of information out there. Yes, it is expensive, but I absolutely think it is worth the price.